Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for this day is the Magnificat from the Gospel of St. Luke in the first chapter. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary was pregnant. It was a miraculous conception, but who would ever believe? It must have been hard for Mary. The God's angel had told her of Elizabeth, that once barren woman who was now also with child. And so the virgin mother decided to pay her relative a visit. Now we can only imagine how Mary must have felt as she traveled, her fears, her concerns, her worries. But once she arrived, oh, how her spirit must have soared when Elizabeth, filled by the Holy Spirit, said to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. And so today, some 2,000 or so years later, we still thrill to hear these words and we thank God for the Virgin Mary and what He accomplished through her. Now, although some Christians have mistakenly exalted Mary far more than is right, nevertheless, we do well to remember her today as an example of true faith, true faithful obedience. And moreover, we listen to the words of today's text, Mary's famous song, the Magnificat, with which she responded to Elizabeth's greeting. And we realize that this day is not really about Mary, but about, about God, the gracious God who acted through her to bring salvation to us. For Mary might be our example. But Mary's son is our Savior. But what was so special about Mary? There were indeed many other maidens in Israel at the time, and undoubtedly some were much like Mary, waiting for God to keep the promises of which the prophets had spoken. So what is it that made Mary so special, so different from all the rest? Many have speculated, and some have indeed insisted that it was Mary's character, her piety, even maybe her sinlessness, that made her a fitting mother of Jesus. But of course they are wrong. For Mary, you see, was just like us. The offspring of sinners, conceived and born in the natural way, and therefore also a sinner in need of a Savior. Indeed, in her song, she tells us that she rejoices in God, her Savior, who has been mindful of Mary's loneliness and who has done great things for her. See, Mary is saying what made her exceptional was not anything in her at all, but instead it was God's goodness toward her. He chose her to serve him in this very special way. He chose her freely out of grace and mercy, not because she deserved it. And that's exactly how God has acted in the Old Testament as well, choosing the undeserving 
to accomplish his saving purpose. Just think how he chose Abram. From out of his anonymity in the Ur of the Chaldeans, that he might become Abraham. Or Moses, a refugee from Pharaoh's court and a man wanted for murder. This man God called at the burning bush. Or David, great King David, who was called when he was but a young boy. Just a boy, a shepherd boy. And the youngest, what society would see as the one of least worth. Or what about, what about all of these whom God has chosen? All these who were not exceptional in their accomplishments, at least not until God chose them. And God did choose them to serve him in order to fulfill his saving purpose for all mankind. They became instruments of the Lord for fulfilling that promise that God made so long ago, so long ago in the garden to Adam and Eve, that he would send of the seed of woman a seed that would crush the tempter's power. And slowly over the centuries, God elaborated upon this promise through men such as Abraham, Moses, David, Isaiah. But he never did so because those whom he chose deserved it. Quite the contrary, the Bible is filled with stories that show the weakness, the sin of these very same men. The weakness of all God's people. The human weakness. But even that, even sin does not stop a merciful and gracious God from keeping his promises. And so Mary was another link in that long chain of undeserving persons that stretched back through the centuries, those whom God selected for special service in preparing the way of salvation. Now in herself, Mary was no different from the others. But of course, there was something rather unique and significant about what God accomplished through her. See, no longer it was repetition, extension, or the development of the promise. Now it was the promise itself fulfilled. Now God would not send another prophet, but would send his own son, born of a woman, born of Mary, born under the law to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. And so in Mary's son there then arrived the one who would make good on all these promises. For he, Mary's son, not Mary, was the sinless one, because as the angel told her, he was the son of the Most High, that is the son of God. And through Mary's son, not Mary, God would accomplish the great things of which Mary speaks. Lifting up the humble, filling the hungry with good things while he sends the rich away and scatters the proud. In Jesus, therefore, God acted to show mercy to the lowly, the downtrodden, the suffering those who realize the consequences of their own sinfulness, their separation from God, and their coming death. God acted not only by assuming their nature, but also by taking their sin and their death onto the cross and into the tomb where he left it behind once and forever on Easter morning. And so God blesses those who let him do it all. Those whom, who accept him as the gracious and merciful God that he is, who make no claims for themselves because they understand both their own need and the wonder of God's love in Christ Jesus. But on the other hand, it is clear also that God threatens wrath 
and punishment against those who exalt themselves over people and against God, who think that they know better, indeed who think that they are better than God, better than the God who made them and loves them. In pride, they refuse to recognize themselves as sinners. They refuse to recognize their need for God's mercy. And thus, they receive the judgment that they deserve. But Mary, on the other hand, is our example of, of the very opposite of that. She makes no claim to herself, but she rests content in God's promise. When Mary spoke the Magnificat, she had not yet seen the fulfillment of God's mercy or His judgment. She was speaking on the basis of faith. God's angel had come, and Elizabeth had prophesied. And that was all. But it was enough. Their word was the basis for Mary's confidence, for her song. For she recognized what they said was the word of God, and she knew that God did what he had said. The baby would come. The Savior would be born. And so faith lives by the word, never by sight. And true enough, we have many reasons for faith. Not the least is the record of God's fulfilling of his promises, starting right here with the selection of Mary as the Theotokos, as the God-bearer, the mother of God's own Son. But we do not see with our eyes the mighty deeds of God. In fact, quite often we see the opposite. We see the wicked in triumph and the lowly of this world being trodden underfoot. But it is only a temporary perspective it's only apparent because God does what he says. He promised a Savior, and indeed, a Savior has come. And just so today, he still promises salvation to sinners. He offers it freely in the most humble of means, in word, in water, in bread and wine. Commonplace things to do extraordinary and wondrous things for commonplace and unremarkable people in whom the most glorious and remarkable God makes his home. Now like Mary then, we rely on the word, not upon ourselves. And like Mary and all the saints, we stand before God in our weakness, in our faults, but also like them whom God has chosen we are heirs of grace and the forgiveness in Jesus. And this we can surely believe. For just like Mary, in, in any and all circumstances, we can believe it. For God not only makes promises, He keeps promises. And to sinners like us, He promises mercy in His Son. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.